High Admiral Terok Kavik looked at the pristine blue-green planet below him from the bridge of his fleet's flagship, the Rising Sun. He had been tasked by the Union of Stars to clear out the native primitive sapient species called the humans from their cradle world known as dirt or something. The Union discovered this planet when they found an archaic probe on an escape trajectory from the system. The world was a Class X death world beyond what was thought to be possible to be inhabited by sapient species. These worlds, although dangerous for their climate and fauna, were highly prized for their biodiversity and medicinal and crop flora. However, the Union Council soon realized the probe they intercepted belonged to an extant species of omnivorous sapients known as the humans. The Council members, scared by the existence of a death world or sapient species, and not wanting the complexity of first contact, unanimously voted for the extermination of the 20 billion people living on planet Dirt. Actually, it's Earth, but who cares? And the colony planet of Mars. None of it really mattered to Terok. He had been given a task and he would execute it with the ruthless efficiency his fleet was famous for. As he looked down upon the planet's surface, he could see the hundreds of forest fires created by the primitive's nuclear weapons, which had been swatted away like a fly by the point defense systems. Despite this, ground combat had been ongoing for almost two Earth revolutions, far longer than the High Admiral had anticipated. These humans had remarkable stamina and endurance, and could still battle after they lost entire limbs. Nevertheless, as he thought about the battle, a message came through from the surface commander. High Admiral, the final city Tokyo of the humans has fallen. The last human being on Earth is in our custody, and he requests a meeting with you as his death wish. The High Admiral sighed out of frustration, yet his military honor compelled him to take a shuttle to meet the final human. He wouldn't deny the final wish of an enemy that had cost his fleet two years and billions of gedits. Soon, he was walking in the empty streets of Tokyo, once the most populated city on Earth. The abandoned and leaning skyscrapers showcasing the proud craft of their death world or masters even after their demise. He entered the temporary encampment of his troops and saw the human. He was elderly, with wrinkled skin, presumably male. Scars and wounds covered his body while an emptiness shone in his eyes. When Terok arrived, he only uttered one word. Why? Because you presented a threat to the Union members. Trust me, none of us want to wage war as much as your people did. He looked at the High Admiral with a face of accusation. We could have been friends, civilizations helping each other to the stars. Terok was losing his patience. Frankly, for most of us, your species is a pest evolving on a planet where no sentient can survive. Extinction is a formality, after all. Now let's talk about how you want to die. As he walked away from the campsite, Terok was a little distressed about killing the final member of a species, but was happy at the fact that he and his men could finally go back home to their families. A few hours later, as the rising sun prepared to FTL back to the Union Corps and High Admiral was thinking about the delectable sweets his wife made, the navigation officer came with some news. Sir, we have noticed a probe going FTL from around Sol 5. Should we intercept it? Terok thought for a while and then replied, A small, primitive, pre-programmed probe from an extinct race is not worth wasting our fuel for. Besides, if it is intercepted by another civilization, it would only mean more resources for the Union of Stars. The navigation officer nodded and went back to his post. Terok could only dream of sleeping under the sheets with his wife when he got back home. Ten months later, High Admiral Terok was smoking one of those Earth cigars he had retrieved during the invasion. He had to give the Terrans credit for making such high-quality narcotics. Pity they couldn't grow those crops here on his homeworld, Devani. Putting the cigar down into the ashtray, he started making his way towards his report files to finish the remaining reports on the Earth invasion only to be interrupted by the recognizable ringing of his data slate. He picked it up, and he could hear the frantic voice of Vice Admiral Benat. Sir, the Council requests your presence at the Chambers. Benat, tell them my reports on the Invey. Sir, it is not about the invasion. In fact, it appears the humans are still extant. What do you mean? Terok was now worried. It appears Sir the Terran successfully managed to hide the location of one of their interstellar colonies. Our scout ships found this colony during one of our routine sweeps of the region around the Sol system. Population appears to be 10 to 12 billion. Terok was now confused. 
they had accessed the entirety of the human communication system, the internet, and swept through all government data. The data team might have to be reprimanded for this oversight. Nevertheless, he informed the Vice Admiral that he would reach the chambers within two cycles. The chambers were located on Hastral Prime, the capital jewel world of the Union, a massive planet-wide city encompassing the surface. High Admiral Terok now stood in front of the 180 delegates of the member species of the Council. In front of him on the high chair was the speaker from the amphibian Karin species, the founder of the Union of Stars. His deep voice resonated on the walls of the Grand Chamber as he addressed Tarak. High Admiral, your actions throughout Union military history are truly commendable. There has never been a mission where your fleet has failed. Yet here we stand upon the pressing issue of the humans. Tarak cleared his throat. Respected Speaker, I believe the failure of this mission is not the fault of any of my crew. I believe the data team that did the sweep on the human internet is to blame for this previously undetected colony world. Also, our fleet didn't believe such a primitive race would have colonized a planet outside their home system and so we didn't scan regions beyond 50 light years. The speaker muttered something to his aide, probably something about reprimanding the data team Tarak thought before speaking again. Very well then, High Admiral. We will be providing you with four fleets rather than the one fleet you commanded during the invasion. Make sure this time none of these Death Worlders survive. Terok nodded and proceeded out of the chambers. One year later, High Admiral Terok Kavik once again stood at the bridge of his flagship, the Rising Sun, looking down upon another green world. They didn't even care enough to learn the name of this world, yet here they were killing its inhabitants. The humans had somehow managed to hide seven colony worlds with an average population of eight billion right under the noses of the Union. The data team had been publicly executed a few days prior because of this. Tarak was tired after fighting for so long. The humans had reverse-engineered basic Union tech, yet it only protected them for so long under the might of the four Union fleets. This planet was the last bastion of this despicable species. Soon the surface commander informed him about the death of final humans on the surface. He had direct orders from the Council to take at least one human hostage and bring him to the chambers for interrogation as the delegates were curious how the humans managed to hide these colony worlds from them, or even colonize them in the first place. One of the smaller frigates had captured and boarded a fleeing human corvette. Nine of the ten crew ended themselves before the Union forces captured them. The final one had been tackled to the ground after it failed to inhale the poisonous gas in time. Although the success of his mission should have made Terok happy, deep inside he felt a sense of foreboding as if something was off about these humans. Arriving on Hastral Prime, the human was unloaded from the shuttle. He seemed to wear a Terran Navy uniform with heavily decorated badges pinned up on his chest. Although an enemy, Terok felt great sadness for this fellow warrior who had just seen his entire family and species perish. Yet the Terran put up a face of determination, one people knew was used by military officials to hide great sadness or guilt. High Admiral Terok entered the Grand Chamber with the Terran official beside him being guarded by 30 elite Union troopers. Terok bowed to the Speaker and the 180 delegates of the Council. The human did nothing of this sort and stared right at the speaker with its front-facing predatory eyes. The speaker spoke in his deep, booming voice. Human, we have little time to waste for your species or your feelings at this moment. Tell us only what we want to know. How did you manage to hide seven colony worlds under the noses of the Union scouts and data miners? The human, for the first time, smiled. This was not the normal smile of joy as Terok had seen. It was a smile mixed with hatred, disgust, sarcasm, and even a bit of amusement. The human spoke in English, O oh, great and high speaker, the salutation spoken with almost a sneer. Tell me, have you heard about Project Cockroach? The delegates scrambled for their data slates. Terok was familiar with the name. It belonged to an earth insect, or rather, pest. It had managed to sneak on landing craft from the ruins of cities glassed with orbital bombardment. It had managed to proliferate in major Union military hubs, and had basically killed all competition in the sewers of the planets it had managed to access. They were resilient too, surviving orbital strikes, and even people trying to squash them with feet, arms, tentacles, tables, and whatnot. Their population was only kept in control by heavy use of pesticides in infected sewers, 
something not liked by the residents of the region. Lost in his thoughts, Terok barely noticed when the Terran had started speaking again. You won't find much about it because our scientists scrubbed the records. Project Cockroach was supposed to be a revolutionary colonization technique that would allow us to colonize distant worlds with STL tech. That was, of course, before you folks came along. Project Cockroach was soon reorganized into a final effort for survival of humankind. A crude FTL probe loaded with billions of human embryos and the genetic data of Earth's flora and fauna and the entirety of human culture. The High Admiral pondered for a moment and thought about the probe he had detected escaping from Sol 5 into interstellar space so many long ago. The speaker now with a look of relief spoke. Well, in that case, it appears it has failed. The probe you talked about was detected years ago and we will use its vector to intercept it, destroying humanity once and for all. The human only gave him the same horrid smile. Ah, uh, I see you didn't quite understand my explanation. We are not the humans from Earth or one of its colonies. We are the humans from one of the probes. The delegate of the Atraski species, the most technologically advanced species in the Union, spoke up in a furious voice. Nonsense. You expect us to believe you colonized seven entire planets in a matter of one revolution of your homeworld? The human just smiled as always. Humor me, Counselor, were the Atraski pushed into a corner by the ever-looming threat of extinction? Also, you used the wrong time scale. It is actually weeks. The entire chamber went silent with a fearful look in their eyes. The human continued. Now, the best part about Project Cockroach is that it is built upon the concept of von Neumann probes, self-replicating spacecraft that can theoretically colonize the entirety of the Milky Way within 500 million years. Ours can do the same in roughly 200 million years. That probe that you saw around Sol 5 is already a hundred generations old. The planets you destroyed are actually 67th generation colonies. Nice that I have the memories of all the versions of me that you killed on the other six colonies. The few delegates who didn't believe the first statement of the human were now literally shaking in their boots, or whatever their species equivalent is. The speaker opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. The human with a sly look said, Hmm, I wonder if you people heard about the communications blackout in Zitrian space. Zitrians were a relatively new race in the Union of Stars who were located on the edge of the Norma Arm. They were the first civilization to propose the eradication of the humans. Due to the far distance from the core systems, small-scale communication blackouts were common in Zitrian space. The large-scale communications blackout was only seen as an unfortunate effect of a coincidental crash of several major FTL comms. The traffic was reduced significantly, but that was expected after such a large blackout. The Zitrian counselor only formed the words, How? The human laughed, a laugh full of cruel amusement. Few of the prey species in the chamber shuddered at this laugh. Let me show you what happened to Tzol Petar the capital and pride of the Citrians. The human pressed one of his badges and a large image was projected onto the walls of the chamber. One could see Sol Petar with its deep red vegetation and massive orbital arcology. But something seemed off. As the video progressed, a massive swarm of blue-plumed pieces of metal appeared in front of the planet. The counselors watched in horror as these tiny dots started disassembling the entire artificial ring in what appeared to be hive-like efficiency. Ships trying to escape were turned into scrap by the devouring robots or by small missiles. Once the ring was disassembled, the swarm pounced upon the unprotected surface of Zol Petar. In what appeared like mere weeks, the entirety of the deep red vegetation became the brown color reminiscent of dead plants, and the brown was replaced even quicker by the vibrant green hues of earth plants. Megacities on the planet blinked out of existence as their lights were extinguished and relit with the lights of human industry and cities. Just as quickly as the invasion had begun, the probes soon came together into a swarm and jumped to some other unfortunate system. What you see is the rage, spite, and might of the hundreds of billions of humans inhabiting 1278 systems in the galaxy as of right now. The human spoke with his eyes flaring with anger. The Zitrian counselor finally spoke with water pouring out of his pores. Why? The human only smiled at the counselors. We learned the hard way, counselors, as you will soon. Extinction is a formality, after all. After...